Yes. It's the history of your life. And he says his wife, Mer Miriam, knows how to make everything he loves. And they talk about fatouche, yeah. the salad I'm going to put together. But now I have put my sauce on my chicken. We're going to add some walnuts on top because we have walnuts in the sauce. And then I'll sprinkle with a little parsley. And so we have one of our main dishes here. Right. And what, beautiful. let's see what well, you're doing. I uh, just uh, want to say, don't you think that this is happening to all of us, that food sometimes marks important parts of our lives? You know, things we ate in childhood or on a trip or on a honeymoon. Or I remember when I was a young girl, my mother took me to Paris. And oh, wonderful. we sat outside a mosque, actually, and had mint tea. And I still smell that fragrant mint tea. It was strong black tea with mint and lots of sugar. So it was sweet and strong. And you remember, it you remember the, it. yes, and things you may not eat now, but they were in this part of your life. And then, as you say, when you met someone, what you ate and what, what you're eating now, people became more uh, experimental with food and they tried more. Growing up, we didn't have Thai food, we didn't have Indian food. Maybe you did, but um, the Midwest wasn't exactly full of those restaurants. I'm going to start on my fatouche. I'm adding chopped. I have romaine. I have and some cucumber. And I have chopped garlic, cumin. Yes. And I will cut up half a lemon to go with my full madamas. Adding some chopped tomatoes and spring onion. Then some chopped green pepper. It's a, it's a wonderful, healthy salad. It really is. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. This is the interesting. And I'll add some more parsley here. And I like the flat leaf parsley. And I love the spices, you know, the cardamom, the cinnamon, uh, the cumin um, that they are using in, in their dishes. It really Beautiful. gives it a very special flavor. So, so I'll this make my own, my own food, right? I mean, I'll put it together you'll, and... and you'll, yeah, you'll eat that and mash it with a fork and put a little cumin on, a little garlic on, sprinkle some lemon juice on it. And it's a delicious it's a, It meal. is, and the table is usually beautifully set. You have all these green dishes. Now, all right, the chicken is done. Here's another interesting touch. I've taken pita bread and toasted it, and I've torn it into little pieces. And you add that to the salad, and then you, you can stir this up. It's dried, and I was surprised to see it the first time I had it. Um, I'm going to add some mint to my salad. Mint is a wonderful oh, mint is, I, addition, I, isn't it, to yes, this food? Yes, I made some meatballs, uh, and they are mint-flavored meatballs, and they are wonderful with mint, cumin, a little chopped onion, and cinnamon. It really is a wonderful variation on a standard meatball dish. Uh, I hope you'll get a chance to try that at home. Um, you know, we talked about uh, the welcoming of people, Arabs, into their homes. And there was a scene in this book in which a neighborhood is sort of, they're flushed out of their apartments and they come into uh, Omar's house yeah. with his wife, Mary. I'm there, 40 people in there. And she says to her husband, it's like two in the morning, I should offer them all tea. And he said, no, no, not right now. Let's not do the tea now. But when they all left around four before they left, she offered everybody tea. Right. They're always wanting to be hospitable. And it was such an yeah. interesting, eerie kind of it, experience. And it struck me particularly when Omar plucks up all his courage to go to the house of his arch enemy, a man who's really out to kill him. Yes. And he's afraid for his life in a way, but he enters that home and the man is cautious. He says, you know, as long as you're at home, you are part of my family. He offers him baklava and the best seat in the place. and. It was just the tradition of yes, hospitality very interesting, that is isn't it? Of course, maybe it could be predominating even in this kind of tent situation. It could be something like from a cowboy scene too. Come in and have a drink with me in the saloon, and then then shots are fired. <laughs> you know, you never know. But this book has a bit of everything. No, as long as he was in his home, he was going to treat him like an honored guest. It was. It was fascinating. Absolutely. Um, it's also these polite sayings, these lovely sailing, sayings like, may Allah lengthen your life, or morning of joy to you. Yes, yeah, so you I would come in, that. and if I were to see 
Gabrielle, the first thing in the morning, I'd say morning to you, morning of joy, joy to you, Gabrielle. Yeah. And you might say double morning of joy yeah. back to me. I mean, they're very, very nice uh, t the way they greet people. Yeah. But let's get, um, let's see what we're doing here. I'm going to mix up my fatouche. I'm making another salad. As, a, as we've said, salads are so important in uh, Arab cuisine. This salad is uh, a bed of spinach, then chopped uh, celery, dates, and toasted walnuts. And you mix all this together and put it on top, and then you put crumpled feta cheese on top of that, and then you can drizzle some olive oil and lemon on it, although it doesn't actually need a uh, vinaigrette necessarily. It's truly a meza. A meza is a sort of a table, a setting, uh, of these salads and they are wonderful like you said yeah they're so healthy so, and look at this you have celery, celery well, uh, toasted walnuts and dates and okay. you put that over the spinach or mixed greens like or whatever that. salad you have you put that on top and then that is wonderful then you crumple uh, crumble crumple crumble feta cheese on top you of can that. crumple or yeah, crumble, can, whatever you want I could to do crumple oh. the feta cheese as well so you're going to put little slices, or are you going to crumble it? Uh, I I will kind of You'll make kind it of in crumble. little squares, yeah. And the, oh, um, that is beautiful. Um, and another thing I did like about the book was at the end when um, Omar Youssef says, and clearly this is the first in what's going to be a series, but he says he found his mission in detection, and it is not as it may be traditionally to detect the past and maybe then take revenge on the persons who've done it. But he wants to detect in order to protect the future. And I thought that was so beautiful that, you know. He was, he's a very interesting man. And he want, he, his lesson was to his students that you must be fair, you must not do the same things that people are doing. You must change and think about the good of the people. And so many of his students took that very seriously, and that's one of the turns and twists in the book. Uh, he's a man that's been saddened by activities and by what has happened in, the, in that region. Uh, you find that you're walking the streets with him, don't you, when you're right. in that book? But you, he hasn't lost his optimism and his hope that things can get better, that we have to right. get beyond the stereotypes, beyond the... Um, Talking know, about stereotypes, you know, I think our author really decided to write these books, and he's there are four or five mysteries. Every year he's written a book, uh, The Secret Assassin, uh, a, a Grave in Gaza. Uh, right, and this is the first. Though. This was the first written in 2007, and he wanted to eliminate the stereotypes that so often appear in the media because they're mm -hmm. sensational and they sell. And right. he. And still, we have a couple of really big stereotypes. I mean, look at the head right. of the school, uh, Mr. Stedman. Yes. We can't help but think this is a bit of a stereotype. He's an American, and he's not very, uh, what, he's not very adept, is he's he? Not, he does not understand that culture at all. He tries, but he doesn't have any understanding of either the culture or the language. He didn't have but, enough immersion, I think, but Matt, Yusef is trying to help him, right. actually. And Matt Reese, I think, thought that he can reach a wider audience telling them, him, them about Palestinian life than he could with his nonfiction books. And this is the first fiction that he, book that he had written, and he's been committed to it ever since. So now, if you get in, it, it, want to know what he's doing next, he is going to be writing about Mozart. And so yes. to learn more about it, he took piano lessons. And this is an interesting aspect. Yeah, uh, was, the book's already out, I think. I, it Mozart is already book. out. And the next book is going to be about Caravaggio. The, oh, really? The, uh, well, well, what kind of artist was he? Flamboyant, uh, devious. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to, he's taking art lessons to learn how to, <laughs> to paint. So you have, this is a very interesting book. I do recommend it. And, yes. and I think it's amazing that you found it and, it, and you brought it. It's a good read and at the same time it's informative. So it really is a wonderful uh, opportunity to find more out about a part of life that we usually don't know much We about. don't. No, we don't. Uh, um, we're going to be back in just a moment. We're going to show you some scenes uh, in Bethlehem. And of course, 
uh, much, much of the action takes place at the Church of the Nativity, and it isn't just to go in and worship. There, the shooting goes on everywhere, and even in the church. We won't show you that part. I, we do have a picture of the Church of the Nativity, but there are other scenes of life in Bethlehem. And when we come back, we will put our finishing touches, and we will share our baklava with you. We'll be right back. And our book today has been The Collaborator of Bethlehem by Matt Benyon Reese, who lives in Jerusalem, grew up in Wales, a very international young man, a wonderful story. Uh, I don't want to say wonderful. It's tense. It's exciting. It's yeah. educational. What it's, else? Yeah, yeah. It's moving. It's insightful. Very much it's, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. I've enjoyed the food that we've prepared. Yes. And you we have a beautiful presentation we've for done our mates. A, a lot of chopping, as you can see. I've made the full madamas, the fava bean dish, which you can eat with garlic, with cumin, and with lemon. So you would never put that on? You put it on, each person helps him or herself. So if I want I more cumin and less garlic, then I yeah. kind of mix it myself. Yeah. Good. And then I've made a very refreshing salad with spinach. Uh, walnuts, dates, celery, and feta cheese. And finally, there are the mint uh, meatballs. Mint, cumin, cinnamon, and a little onion meatballs. Very, very tasty, very spicy. Um, oh, sounds very good. All right, and I did, I did a salad too, a fatouche with the lettuce, torn up pita bread, and we have, you know, the usual ingredients of a salad, tomatoes, cucumbers, and green pepper. And then I made the uh, chicken breast with walnut sauce, yogurt, and I have carrots, and, and I have onions in here. And um, walnut sauce is just out of this It world. is wonderful, and I have some walnuts on top here. We have our pita, we had our wonderful juice, and for dessert, tell us about our dessert. Yes, we have a whole selection of bakalava and other fine nut uh, and honey specialties donated by Elias, a wonderful Mid-Eastern restaurant on 23 right across from the mountains there. And we thank them for this beautiful dish. We thank them for dish. it and hope you all will try them sometime. Yes, it's an adventure, very good food. And I, I must say, I, I want to thank you very much for introducing me to this writer. I thought it was most interesting, stimulating, and as you say, very thoughtful as well. So, uh, Gabrielle, it's, it's been a pleasure, and thank you. And you know, good food, good friends, good books make for a very good life. We'll see you next time on Dinner in a Book. Dinner and a Book is made possible by a generous grant from the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation.